Now, I have the privilege of presenting a uh, general overview of what I hope will be achieved, and perhaps with a little bit of background as well. And since I have an enormous amount of material to cover in a very short time, I will use a lot of pictures. And I urge you, therefore, to fasten your seatbelts and get ready for a roller coaster ride. I will cover a lot of topics, as you can see, and uh, in dealing with this, which is the basis, I think, why we believe that investments in education, science, and culture are not only helpful to, to advance our own cause of uh, development in our countries, but will also help the cause of global understanding and better bridges between the United States and the countries of Muslim majorities and Muslim communities everywhere. So, as I cover all of this, you will see each of these headings appear in a red slide like that, which is like a new chapter heading, and therefore you know that I'm getting closer to the end. Let me proceed with a prologue that for many of us who have lived the nightmare of the Cold War, we were happy to see pushing back the specter of nuclear holocaust, but I think that many quickly discovered that security was not necessarily obtained. And in fact, on 9-11 was a very important event because it was an attack on the soil of the United States itself in the heart of New York. It brought about a quick transformation of attitudes in the US, and we know what followed in terms of destructive wars that have taken place. Wars are always destructive, and understanding is usually impaired during wars. And as has been stated by a number of our colleagues who spoke before, the issue of Palestine, for many of us, remains at the heart of any new advances. And yet, we have seen violence prevail. And for me, as a librarian, of course, that's a very particular picture, which I think is very powerful, whether it's books or bombs. But I will call a witness that I think everybody will recognize. Napoleon Bonaparte, who probably used the sword more than anybody, while at the same time did a lot in founding the civil code and other things, reflecting at the end of his life in St. Helena, here is what Napoleon Bonaparte had to say. Do you know what astonished me most in the world? The inability of force to create anything. In the long run, the sword is always beaten by the mind. Now, coming from Napoleon, I think it's something worthy for all of those who use force to reflect on. For all of us, of course, in everything we do in our own societies, in the pursuit of security and stability, we see peace and justice. And obvious reminders need to be restated. There shall be no security without peace. There shall be no peace without justice. There shall be no justice without equity and no equity without inclusion. And as we all know, after a rather difficult period in relations between the United States and our part of the world, President Obama not only issued a number of declarations, he actually came and spoke here in Egypt and promised a new beginning, to which, as you've heard from some of my colleagues, we have added a question mark. He delivered a masterful speech, but is it enough, people will ask. I think the answer is, not yet, of course, we want some action on a number of important political fronts, but beyond the wars and the political problems that still divide us, can we find new initiatives in things that do unite us? And that is the purpose of this conference. Set aside for the moment some of these issues and see whether we can build better collaborations in education, science, and culture. Now, uh, we've heard several mentions uh, about clash of civilizations, dialogue, and alliance of civilizations. Actually, since the collapse of the Cold War and uh, the appearance that things would be going America's way, 
things have changed. From the chutzpah of my friend Frank Fukuyama declaring the end of history, and uh, to the late Sam Huntington's The Clash of Civilizations. Notice that the subtitle of The Clash of Civilizations is the remaking of world order. So it was a proposal as much as a thesis. And this is a summary of the presentation of uh, what was basically an important paper then turned into a book, and in which he highlighted that the so-called Western Islamic confrontation would be there on a civilizational basis. The response to that came from President Khatami of Iran, then President of Iran, who at the United Nations called for a dialogue of civilizations, not a clash of civilizations. And sure enough, the United Nations adopted the views that were presented, and they produced by a distinguished panel of wise people this report, Crossing the Divide, Dialogue Among Civilizations. But some of us felt that this was not enough and that we had to go further and to move from dialogue of civilizations to the alliance of civilizations. And I had the privilege of serving on that committee. Uh, and here I am with President, uh, Prime Minister Erdogan and Prime Minister Zapatero and Kofi Annan. When we presented our report on the alliance of civilizations to execute projects together. How projects can we do to deal with media, with youth, with immigration, with real issues, with education, with stereotypes, with human rights, with the rights of women, with other issues, where can we actually collaborate to advance this? We had an important setback at the time of the Khartoum controversy, but the Alliance of Civilizations report worked hard and avoided a similar outbreak later on under the leadership of President Sampaio of uh, uh, Portugal, who is now the High Commissioner on Alliance of Civilizations for the United Nations, we were able to avoid similar outbreaks despite the continuation of some European politicians to disparage Islam in terrible ways. So what we want, really, is perhaps best captured in the writing of a sentence written by a writer who had a foot in each camp. Nobel winner Albert Camus, partly Algerian, partly French, he summarized it by saying, don't walk behind me, I may not lead. Don't walk in front of me, I may not follow. Just walk beside me and be my friend. 